a movement is happening. We, Laura and I, have noticed a lot of interest in the last year. We spent, the, obviously, the last year in the Azores, on Pico. And by being there, obviously because of COVID, and we just decided to stay there, we got to just ex notice in the interest and the stories we were hearing, people that have bought, people are coming, people are thinking of buying. It's just it's a lot of interest in all the islands. Obviously, we're on Pico. We're hearing more about the Pico, Fayal, Triangle Islands there. So um, I think it's going to continue this interest. It's not going to die down or anything. Um, the Azores or Pico, it's not for everybody. It's I always say it's for those uh, like-minded uh, individuals that love the nature and all the things that the great things that uh, we check on those boxes. Um, there's no white sand beaches. We don't have 35 plus degree weather. Those those people aren't coming, and that's why mass tourism is not coming. Okay, and that's just the way I we I and Laura look at it, and other people we talk to. It's just it's not that kind of place. Okay, uh, so. Um, you know, it's a place we have to take care of, right? Yeah, these islands, these types of islands, right? So there's not too many places left on the planet like the Azores. So we must protect it. And I think these people that are deciding to spend more time here fall into that. We want to protect it, okay? I think we want to share the islands with individuals that want to do the same thing, okay? And I think it's a very special place. We feel privileged. I know I was born there, but it's... I always feel privileged. Just sometimes going back, it's like I'm going back for the first time where I'm like still in awe, you know, even though I was born right there, just by the uh, few feet from the ocean. In Laish, the peak, the source. What do you need initially to buy a property? Pretty straightforward. In Portugal, you need First thing you need is a NIF number. It's like a social insurance number. You need to have that, okay? And then you need a bank account. Now, in order to get a NIF number, you need to get a sponsor. So lawyers can do that uh, minimal cost. They can actually become your sponsor. In other words, you need to have a contact on the island. Um, you know, it could be a family member, but sometimes expats, they might not know too many people. That the lawyer will do that for you. You have your NIF number, you have your bank account. Then pretty much you can buy car, you can buy certain things, house, obviously, and um, you you need that. No one could be on that. Even You don't have to be a resident, you know, actually living, living on the island to have it. Uh, so, but that's one of the first things you should do. Even if, for example... Let's say you made up your mind, I want to buy a house in, in, in the Azores. You could already get, uh, even when you go there for the first time and you're just starting the looking process, you could already do that, okay? So then you have it, you're ready. That part, you can do your NIF number, you can do your bank account number, and that's it. And you have that, so in case you, when you find that house, it's one less thing you have to do, okay? Because you will need that. Just visiting, that's not for, you know, you don't have to worry about that. But a lot of people that I know recently, that's exactly what they've done. Uh, they already did a bit of research before they got there to the in this case it was pico they stayed enough time to get the a feel of the island they wound up finding a place buying the place and then they went through this process nif number bank account lawyer these are the basics you know the basics of, of the first step towards on your property you need to have just be prepared be ready uh, if you are serious about buying uh, property uh, spending more time on the islands. When you start thinking of you want to buy a property, you know for sure, it's important to know what type of property you want to buy, right? Do a bit of research. Do I want a new build? It's good to already have that sort of thing figured out. Uh, if you know what size of the property do you want? Two bedrooms, three. It's just like those you know House Hunters International. You've seen it. They always have the same questions. It's good because it, it'll speed up everything. So when you do find you know the property or the property finds you. You know, you don't have to, you already know what you want, more or less. You know, you're a bit flexible here and there, but you have the, you know, pretty much 80%, you know that, you know what, if it doesn't have that, I don't want this, and you move on to the next house. I think that's very important uh, to buy the right property that suits you. There's nine islands, okay? Knowing the, the property, the type of property, but also which island you might want to visit. After doing some research, you might you know, you have the list down to three. You should visit, and I think, uh, spend some time getting connected to the island. For, you might choose one over the other based on that connection. And I think it's important to take your time. 
and then find the right property because the right property will be on any of those islands because they all have the variety of properties and uh, you know and then it's about the budget and how much you want to spend right so um, but I just think the key is to take your time um, you know those first initial steps of, of knowing exactly more or less what you want is very important How easy is it to buy direct from the seller? You know, I wish it was easier, uh, but you got you need luck. I mean, that's pretty much what I can say from experience. Uh, we obviously found one and we bought it directly from the seller. So we were lucky. We also were taking our time. We happened to be there for quite a while. I mean, you know, it just, we were not in a rush. We knew what we wanted. We knew the area we would like to be in. We had our idea how much we wanted to spend and the rest is history okay we found this really beautiful property jam we were and at the right time right but you, this is, you know this does happen I've, I've other people have same thing they're hiking they see for sale or they might have a friend or a family member that knows someone unfortunately passed away now the house is going to be coming up and they don't hit the, the market so it does happen i mean not as often but you can you definitely can otherwise you got to find a real good real estate agent okay so and then they you know you have that the part of your team and then even if you're not there yet they can already give you some leads or you know and then the, but the key is to be to have feet on the ground and to take your time doing it okay because sometimes you know you got to see a lot you know and you'll know when that place is you know you don't just want to settle either think oh that's not even going to come up or oh you know prices are just going to continue to rise you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you're going to make the decision yourself. But I just think you need to, they do, it does happen. And you just got to be at the right place at the right time. I think that's basically what, what, how it works with uh, sometimes a lot of things when you need luck to be on your side, right? So, um, but definitely Another possible. thing about, um, you know, in case you do find a house and directly from a seller, is already to have the notary as part of your team. Because the minute you find, you could already, you know, get the, the, the register number of the property you can already let the look check this out this is clear so then you don't go through all this stuff and then you it's a you know and it's you're not gonna you know it's a mess all the paperwork's not there so it's very important to get a notary especially if you're, you're gonna try and find something with feet on the ground anyone's anyone that's gone through it and had that really good notary it's like gold you know because it, it speeds up things and it makes you feel a lot comfortable you sleep at night especially if you've never, you're not from there you're gonna have these extra stresses if, if you can get rid of some of the stresses and the notary they do their job it kind of does that okay it takes a bit of the stress you kind of leave it they're the professionals you kind of okay and you trust them one other thing about the notary um which is also important uh obviously buying it directly from the seller or not is that um he can refer you he'll refer you to a lawyer to inspectors you need an inspection sometimes get the inspector there right away to make sure there's nothing behind the scenes, right? Um, because you gotta, that's very important to you. You don't want any surprises later on. You want to make sure that the house is the way it's supposed to be. And obviously, uh, you know, paperwork, documents, they'll make sure all that's in play, as we mentioned before. Um, but that's pretty much, I think it's possible. Need some luck, and you need to take a bit of time. Another question I had was basically, is it easy to find mid-size house on Pico or San Miguel? This individual actually asked this question because those are the two items that he was looking at. And yes, it is. Obviously, San Miguel being the biggest island, let's put it this way, the Azores has 250,000 population. Half of them are on this island, San Miguel. Okay? So there's a lot more houses, so you're going to have a lot more choice. Okay? Some areas that you're also going to be some more expensive because... Uh, you have again the most expensive properties are going to be on San Miguel because there's more of them but also on the other end if you're away from the cities you're going to find some some pretty good uh, affordable property as far as pricing I think it'll be hard to find a live-in ready mid-size house under 200,000 euros you can probably find under let's say 150,000 euros or close to that if it needed work and the more work you need to do on a house, the less the purchase price is going to be. So you got to calculate everything, analyze it, you know, only you know. 
your budget and how much you want to spend. So one thing about uh, the pricing of the, of, let's say that we're talking about this mid size, and you know, um, I find it that obviously out of the nine islands, the smaller ones, I think these prices shift downward. Okay, they will shift downward, and you you might be able to see a live-in ready for like under a hundred thousand. I've seen it. Okay. Uh, and smaller type islands, right? Um, don't forget also that the pricing is affected by the area on the island, right? So then I'm on Pico, so Pico has all the areas where you see a lot of people sort of buying. You know, 99% of the island is all ocean view. You might be, okay, you know what, I'll just step away from here and all of a sudden there's the, the size I want and it's 50 to 80, you know, 50,000 euros less or whatever, just as an example. So that's what I'm saying. You do have to look at the whole island and because I, I'm pretty confident that you can still find, um, you know, all types of pricings. It just depends. No, another ins another example. You know, I also know someone that is very handy. Okay, they can do a lot of these work. So they are, you know, for them, they're like, I can do a lot of this labor. I'll do it. Just buy the materials, and it's great. They can buy the fixer up or fix it themselves. And some of these people, they love that. That's part of, it could be like a hobby or whatever. And then they grab something, you know, kind of inexpensive and they put the love, the sweat and tears into it. <laughs> and then they're double the investment right there. I mean, because I think, you know, real estate, it is a good investment pretty much throughout the Azores. I, I really believe that. And uh, I think other people, uh, expats are, are, are finding that out. Can you finance uh, a property if you're not living um, or a Portuguese citizen? Yes, you can. Uh, in our case, we did that. We weren't even looking to finance it, uh, but uh, the offer was there. We said, let's give it a shot, and we were still in Canada, and uh, we got pre-approved. We finalized everything when we got to the island, but the interest rates were so low, and that made sense for us. It was, you no. Know, most people do buy the house outright. A lot of them might have the, the, the cash ready and they prefer to do that and, and they do it. But, uh, you know, some people might, want, might not even be looking at financing and you know what, it's doable. Key is to have a good bank and to have a good banker, okay? So like a man, in our case, we had the manager of the bank. They answer all the questions that you have and they really are slow. You know, want you to understand everything and it's amazing. And I think for us, it worked. It was, again, a very good experience and it worked for us. If you decide to finance it, usually in our case, we put 20% down payment. That's how it is. It could have been, I think if you're under 50 or sorry, under 55, if I'm not mistaken, you could only put, you can do between 10 and 15, but in, I'm 55 plus, so that's, in our case, it had to be 20% down. Um, and there's different terms, just like in Norway, it's very similar to here in Canada. Uh, so it's, I mean, it might be something worth at least researching. Someone asked me about, uh, what do you think is better, buying new or existing? It really comes down to the person, really. I think you gotta leave both options open. Don't be afraid of either of one or the other. In the Azores, they're both possible. Okay, so it comes down to if you decide to do a new build, you want something totally like your, with your signature on it, that that's how the road you're going to have to go. If you want to grab some a house that already has some character, history, personality already, and you just want to add a little bit to it, then existing is the way to go. Just keep all your both of your options open and, um, you know, be welcoming to both. So that's pretty much for all the questions, but here's, this is just a little bit of advice um, that I have, and just a few points. I'm actually going to read it out here so I don't miss it. So there's basically to tie everything in that we've talked about today uh, with all these questions and answers to do with buying property or making the move and that sort of thing to the Azores. Some of my advice is basically falls like this. It's uh, do research on islands of interest. So it may be one or two or three Go a little bit, do research even before visiting. I think that's always great to do. And, you know, look at YouTube channels, look at uh, websites, uh, government sites as well. Um, because that's, you know, you, I think that's important. There are real estate sites you can go into, like Idealista, Zoom, Azores Properties, even Remax and so forth. I think it'd be worth checking it there. Just do it with a grain of salt because sometimes there's even properties that, that's already been sold. But just gives you a little bit of a lay of the land. Uh, 
before we even visit the island. Um, try to establish local contacts prior to visiting. So if you do, if you're now kind of getting serious about going, visiting, looking for properties, try somehow to get some contacts. Sometimes people ask me, do you have a an order? And I happily share it, that, that kind of thing. So then you already could already send emails to the notary, to the account, to the the manager at the bank, whatever the situation might be, and at least you have some, especially if you've never been there. A good real estate agent that wants, you know, that looks after uh, you and has your best interest, and you already have a, a bit of a contact beforehand, he can already been sending you ideas, you know, that's great. It's another member of your team, right? Like a notary and a banker, um, you know, all these are through referrals, right? So in, in this case, I can refer you because I have done on, on Pico, I could, Refer, you know, obviously in San Miguel, I don't have any, any, I don't know anyone there at this point. I love sharing. So, you know, uh, when we have something to share and if it's worthwhile that we feel comfortable, we'll share it with you if we trust it, you know. Know the, t the type of property you want, like I mentioned before. That's important. Have an idea, get a feeling, visualize you in this property. What, what, are you looking at the ocean? Are you looking at the, the mountain? <laughs> Whatever it is, you have goats around you. Go right into the visualization of it because Laura and I had that, you know, and I've been, we've been visualizing for years and years and that vision never changed and it's still there and it will not change. Now we'll more in the reality of it because we can actually step and look and, I, you know, and I think that's very, um, you know, it's, it's such a high, you know, and, uh, you know, if you know what you're looking for, it'd be easier to find, I think. The last one is very important. Make your vi your first visit as long as possible, especially if you've never been. You're going to a new place. You've heard about, done a bit of research. As soon as you step there, you're going to start taking everything, and it's and it's more and more and more of the of the island or the islands will get into you, right? So, but it's especially if you're looking out to buy property, you might want to retire there. You obviously want to get sponge as much as you can that first trip. So then, when you come back, you can draw on it. So then. On your second trip, you're, you're, you're literally ready to hit the ground running, right? So that's why I think it's important. Try to stretch the time that you'll have on your first visit. Now, I just want to recap a little bit why Azores. Why would anyone be looking at the Azores? Why do I and Laura and these followers that have come to the Azores and bought and visited and know are in love with it and then you know are adding to their lives why well basically you you have like a basic it's just a check all the boxes the more boxes you check no i'm not saying you could check in all the boxes that would be like total perfection i don't know if that's possible but if you can check most of them whatever destination whatever that's the ultimate i think from our experience and you can talk to the people that have been there or just visited or now living uh, spending more time there, they will always tell you this, peaceful, safe, secure, healthy, low cost of living, so affordability. Um, your dollar can go long, uh, longer, you know, if you're in Canada, U.S., these places where you're earning more, the dollar can go further, okay? you can buy more, um, you can stretch the dollars. Uh, more laid back. No mass tourism. You'll have easy access between North America and Europe. Logistically, you're located in a remote area, but it, it seems like you're more remote than you are. You're only about five, five and a half hours from Toronto. You're about four and a half, five from Boston, two hours from Lisbon. I mean, it's you're in, you're in a perfect location to be to visit Europe or North America quickly. Uh, it's definitely a great base. The North Atlantic is full of uh, marine life. Uh, it's uh, a very healthy, low pollution, and uh, you should just, I'll give you, I know a lot of people that have watched these videos that have been there, they know all this, but again, there might be someone that's never heard of the Azores, or know very little, that, you know, that just a little recap on the Azores. I'm going to end the video here. Uh, hopefully, some of this information was useful, especially for, for some of you that are watching this that uh, don't know a lot about the Azores and are considering finding uh, a place just like we've described in these answers to the questions that came and are still coming. And I'll continue to do that. Whatever I can do, uh, if you have any, you know, feel free to send me an email. If you have any questions, basic questions, uh, if I can't help you, I can refer you. Um, and feel free to comment and uh, share our channel um, 
because you know this is a journey that uh, we continue that we don't want to end right so uh, anyways thanks for joining me we'll see you on the next video okay take care